Hi everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I am continuing my coverage of my run through the 2021 War of the Ring International Tournament. This is round three, game two. I am currently three and two, and I need to win all three of my next games to be able to make it into the top cut, or two out of three and get very lucky on the wild card draw. So this is my rematch against Jim. I am playing free people this game, and he is playing shadow, and you can see our opening rolls. He allocated one eye and rolled one more, but got two musters, which is always nice for shadow, and these are his opening cards, hill trolls and Nazgul search. So one thing to think about whenever you roll uh, a will of the west and at least two uh, character dice and then whatever else, you can get Aragorn turn one. So you separate, and then you move, and then you use a ring to move, and then, mo sorry, separate companions, move companions, move companions, and then Will of the West to crown Aragorn. So you could do that turn one, or you have three movement right here. Um, now this Palantir obviously is nice when Gandalf is guide to be able to play a card. Neither of these are playable. So would you comment below, would you get Aragorn turn one with these dice, given that he rolled, Shadow rolled two eyes, or would you just move the fellowship and see what you get? So um, he, I start by passing, he draws a card, and then I move the fellowship. So my thinking is, I don't want to give him a ring early on, um, I got three movement, this is good to get the fellowship going. So that's what I did. Maybe if he had three eyes, I might have done differently. And certainly if he had four eyes, I think I would have done differently. So um, he misses and um, gets his armies moving. He merges up in Mordor and um, he misses again. And then I move and he hits me and gets a two. So I lose Gandalf on my third movement. I didn't have a playable card. So... Um, it didn't make sense to try and play cards. And, and I figure if I got hit and revealed, then I would use this last die to hide using Strider's ability. But this is a good, very good hunt run for me. I'm happy to lose Gandalf to a two, especially given that uh, Saruman's going to be showing up. So this is, this is a very good start for me, I would say. And he gets Saruman, so that's fine. And I get I will go alone. And then I draw into Fearfire Foes at the start of, um, what happened there? Oh, okay. Sorry. So I drew a free card. I said that I intended to draw a strategy card. Um, and we agreed that, um, we agreed that I would take it back and we were talking on discord. So I said I would draw a strategy card. So he knew what was supposed to happen. So that, that was fortunate, um, that we were all on the same page. So that's what happened there. I ended up drawing a strategy card, um, Fear Fire Foes. And he plays give it, to, uh, give it to Us. Always nice to get that into the hunt pool. Um, he gets an early Cruel Weather, so he's feeling good about that, even with the Fellowship progress. And I get some good muster cards. I'm happy to see um, good Gondor defense when I know that it seems like at least he's, he could easily be coming towards Gondor. Um, he allocates two eyes and then rolls a nice number of musters. I think this is generally a, a very good roll. I mean, he doesn't, he only has one Palantir in case he has a bunch of um, character cards that he wants to play. But generally, this is, you know, you're very happy to see a bunch of early musters. Um, I do get lucky and get my Will of the West uh, for, for Gandalf, which is great. Obviously, I do want um, at least one movement on top of that. Um, but can't always get exactly what you want. I'm very happy with the Will of the West. So I pass, he moves his armies around, um, and I bring Gandalf into Grey Havens because I have Fear Fire Foes. So I know that I can bring him into to Bree or the Shire um, with Fear Fire Foes, and then the North will go to war, and I'll have a good use for these early musters. He's bringing this army up north, and, um, you know, it would be great if I had gotten, if I could get these army units in, I, given that he had this army here, 
I probably should not have passed. I probably should have just gotten Gandalf right away because I knew I was going to do that. Fear of fire foes. And then I could have used one of these army musters to get to get a unit um, from Dale um, into Woodland Realm before he arrives. But now I'm not going to be able to arrive. I'm not going to be able to get them to war in time. Um, so he gets Sauron to war. I realized my mistake one die too late. I go ahead and play fear of fire foes. Okay. At least I can get um, one unit in if I need to. And he then musters the Southrons and Easterlings to war here. And I, I don't understand that. I think it would make sense if you're bringing this army up north to besiege Woodland Realm quickly, then better to get it under siege because otherwise I'm going to bring these units um, from the north in. Um, maybe his plan at this point is I need to get the South Rounds and Easterlings to war because I know this is going to go crazy. I'm going to have to reinforce. Um, so an early Fear Fire Foes with an early Gandalf um, obviously there were a lot of things that cascaded very well and luckily for me. Um, so I go ahead and muster into Dale, uh, have good uses for it. And then at this point, I think about, um, either using this army muster to, to bring this army and Dale into Woodland Realm, making it very defensible, or maybe just continuing to muster up in Dale. Um, think about what you would do here. Do you, do you move into Woodland Realm to defend it, leaving Dale open? Or do you keep mustering up Dale or something else entirely? Here are my cards. Obviously, I could play guards at the Citadel, but why? Um, my thinking is because I have help unlooked for, I'm going to muster in Dale. And then um, if he attacks Woodland Realm, because it looks like it's a tasty treat, then we have help unlooked for. So I go ahead and muster into Dale, and he... Um, I guess gets gets Mordor ready for attacking um, Gondor, which I'm perfectly happy to see. You know, I want I want these armies to um, to go after this. He's undoing uh, right, so he almost didn't get the Witch King. Um, obviously, with the North at war, it makes sense to get the Witch King. Um, yeah, no no question there. Glad glad he played it uh, in a good way. All right, so um, he plays Hill Trolls, and he upgrades this army. I don't know, like, why Why not upgrade this army here? Um, this, yeah, maybe he's taking this army all the way up north. Um, I, don't, I don't know what his plan is in the north here. It seems like he needs to deal with this in some way. He used one muster, but he didn't get them all the way to war. Um, so... I'm not sure what's happening here. Okay. Um, I get a power to great, which is fine. Perfectly good combat effect. He doesn't seem to be attacking Lorien, so, and it doesn't protect Woodland Realm. So I'm not super excited about that, but I'm very happy to see Guards of the Citadel because he might try and sneak in here and then um, I'll have that. So um, he again allocates two eyes, rolls a third, and yeah, I mean, I'm going through Moria, so it's nice to try and catch me. Um, but I don't know that it makes a lot of sense to allocate two eyes. Um, maybe. Maybe his military is going slow enough. But part of the reason why his military is going slow is because he's allocating more than one eye. Um, so I get zero movement. Obviously, you want to move at least once per turn because it's hard to hit you on sixes. Um, but I didn't get any. Fortunately, uh, the North is at war, and so I have perfectly fine uses for these three regular musters. Um, and I'll be fine to play, you know, Elven Rope or, you know, something. I have, I have cards to play, so that'll be fine. So I go ahead and continue mustering in Dale. Um, I'm just going to muster like crazy there because what else, what else can I do? I want to put up a fight for this army. And he goes ahead and moves into Mordor and uh, moves towards, moves Mordor into Osgiliath. And I don't know, like, why, why are we attacking Gondor here when the North is already at war? Why isn't this army coming North to deal with this? Or are you just giving up on all five victory points right here, right now? Um, maybe, maybe that's not crazy. Um, the other thing is by saving help unlooked for, 
I can attack because it looks like maybe he could attack into Woodland Realm now because I only had musters. And, and I'm kind of surprised he didn't try this. He could have attacked into Woodland Realm. Seeing that I don't have any musters, he would have forced me to use a ring. Um, but of course, I did have a power to great. I mean, I did have help unlooked for, so it wouldn't have worked. But I don't know. If I were him, I might have, I might have tried. Um, but okay, so I'm just mustering like crazy in Dale and in Carrick. And um, he's getting his armies ready in... Um, around Gondor. So I guess he's deciding to switch to Gondor. Um, and he is attacking and takes out, um, takes out as Gilead. <clears throat> I don't move this army into Minas Tirith because I have um, guards of the Citadel. And I think it'll be wasted. Maybe I should go to Pilar Gear. I don't know. This guy is not really doing much. Maybe Dridden Forest makes more sense. I don't know what I was thinking with this. That feels like a kind of a wasted thing. I think Pilar Gear makes more sense. And then maybe when it gets attacked, it can retreat into Lamadon and, and do something useful. Um, okay, I play Elven Rope. Why not? I have a card to play. And then... Um, he attacks into Pilar gear and, you know, maybe I should have saved a muster thinking that this would happen, but, um, I think it's pretty unlikely that, that, uh, he would have allowed me to muster into Minas Tirith ha had I not, um, you know, if I had musters left. So, and I'm worried that he's going to press the battle in Minas Tirith. And so that's why I want to just, I want to just play guards of the Citadel, get that elite and leader in there maybe i use a ring here to muster an elite in Minas Tirith. um but i have guards of the citadel so just just play guards of the citadel right so i play guards of the citadel that i think is fine no reason to use a ring and then save guards of the citadel for later um and he attacks Minas Tirith, and he's he's leaving a lot of single units around um so you know, I think he's playing pretty defensively against possible uh, military victories, which I think I think makes sense. I'm happy to see Celeborn's Galadrim. Celeborn's Galadrim. I think that's great. Um, always happy to be able to reinforce Lorien, and um, he gets rid of the King is revealed because obviously I don't have Aragorn. So I think that makes a lot of sense. And you know, this is looking this is looking pretty good. At some point, he's going to reveal the fellowship, and he's going to get to play all these good things. You know, maybe I start to think about sending some armies up up here if I muster a bit, and then go attack um, Rivendell while the fellowship is there, and also while um, the elves aren't at war. But I don't know. You got to what, What's happening with this North Army? It's it's definitely going to be a thorn in his side. He's going to have to deal with that in some way. I think so. And this time he allocates zero eyes. Oh no, he allocated one eye. Even though I didn't move, he allocates one eye and then rolls two more. And I finally get a little bit of movement, so that's good. And um, I start to muster into Gondor. I don't know, maybe that's overly soon. Um, <clears throat> but I guess I was thinking, <clears throat> excuse me, it's theoretically possible for him to play... <clears throat> Corsairs of Umbar, so he could move back to Umbar, and then he could attack. And so I want to muster once. So if he moves back to Umbar, I can muster again, and have um, a full contingent of five in there. So that's why I do that muster there. Um, he doesn't have corsairs, so he's just coming in the hard way. I go ahead and muster again, um, getting Dol Amroth pretty strong, and then he moves this. This sort of I don't know exactly why those three are going into Lasarnach. Um, yeah, I don't know what's happening there. It feels like there's maybe a little bit of efficient, inefficient movement happening here. Um, he, he needs to reinforce Minas Tirith, that makes sense. But um, yeah, I think he probably could potentially do that differently with, with these armies moving in. Um, okay, Flocks of Crevain, I don't love it. Um, with three dice, you're getting an extra half a hit. Um, you know, not bad, but I don't know how many tiles, extra tiles it's really resulting in. That said, Moria is right here. So 
if there's a time to do it, now's the time. And he has orc patrol and, and other things. So, you know, not crazy. Um, <clears throat> I might be more tempted to play Horde from the East and get, get Dale taken care of. I, I don't know. He is trying to take care of Minas Tirith, So maybe I would, I would focus on that. Um, all right. So I go ahead and move because at some point I have to move. Um, he does use flocks of Curbane, but still misses. So that's a bummer. I'm now past Moria and, um, <clears throat> he has this awesome army here in Minas Tirith, but he did use two army movements to make that happen. Um, and I wonder if that was really necessary. Um, could we have just filled it up, had a few less elites and then refill it again later. <clears throat> All right. I move again and maybe that's crazy, but, um, the fellowship is doing okay. I have no corruption and I haven't been revealed. Um, and what else am I going to do with that character card? Um, that character die. So I think it makes sense to move. And then this muster, if I get revealed, can hide me with Strider. So, um, but amazingly he misses again. So he has definitely had bad luck, really quite bad luck on the hunt. He's only hit me once. He's allocated a bunch of eyes. To be fair, there was a turn where I didn't move at all. Um, and maybe, maybe even two turns where I didn't move. <clears throat> so yeah, there were two turns, two turns that I didn't move, but I moved a bunch of the other turns. All right. So I play help on look for, because at this point, I'm not too worried about him taking Woodland Realm. I can just actually attack back with Dale. And um, this is a big enough army. I want to whittle it down. So um, he plays Cruel as Death. And, you know, I guess that makes sense. He, he feels like he's giving up on the Fellowship. So he's just trying to move um, more more quickly on the, um, on the attack. It's a nice card effect. Um, I don't know. Maybe you play Deadly Strife here because... You have tons of units and you can just reinforce from Osgiliath next. I might play Deadly Strife here. But what are you cycling for with Orc Patrol? Are you really worried about a bunch of hits from from free? Yeah, I think I would be more tempted to save this for the point where the fellowship gets revealed eventually. But okay. That's an interesting point. So um, he gets two hits um, against me, and I get one plus one hit against him. And he presses. I play Daylight against his Deadly Strife. You know, I don't want to use this up for um, the combat effect because I like being able to defend Lorien, but. Um, I also like getting to defend Minas Tirith and, you know, these guys can hang on for a while, I think. At least that's what I'm thinking right now. Um, but uh, I get five hits, he gets three hits, and it's not going to be enough to hold off. Um, I don't know exactly why I play Challenge of the King here. It's not probably going to make a difference. It could it could make a little difference. Um, he gets one hit and uh, manages to finish me off. So, you know, he just took 10 hit points. I took seven hit points. So, you know, that's generally a pretty good trade for Shadow. And now these, you know, these armies in Gondor should be able to come to Dol Amroth and be able to take it out. I mean, he does have some, some reinforcements, right? Um, and he hasn't drawn Corsairs yet, so he could, you know, come over here and then at some point draw Corsairs and reinforce it. I, th I think he'd be able to take it, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's too much to leave this, leave this open. All right, we'll see what he does. So I go ahead and muster up into Lamroth. I want to try and be as prepared as possible since it seems like he could be coming that way. And he musters in Isengard. Um, so he gets, um... You know, Palantirs is, is, I think, a good card to draw. And I drew um, Grimbjorn, which, you know, I'm always happy to have scouts. And uh, Brave Stand, not, I think, particularly useful at this point, but 
you know, maybe. The other thing is I moved Gandalf to Bree, and I don't, I don't know. I have to be a little careful because, you know, these guys could come to North Downs and attack. So I have to be... I have to be thinking about that a little bit. Maybe the Shire was a better place for Gandalf, but I wanted to keep him um, within range of Rivendell if that was ever going to happen. And also just generally um, possible military attacks up here. All right. Um, you know, I get two movement. I don't declare. And maybe having seen him play Orc Patrol, I should have declared. I could have gone to Lorien, which is another stronghold. Um, but it wastes a point of movement. I could have gone to Parth Celebrant, which um, gets me past Moria without being revealed, so it saves a tile. Um, you know, at some point, I'm going to be revealed, so maybe it makes sense to, um, to declare. I'm still thinking, like, maybe because... I haven't, um, I haven't rolled yet. Maybe I'm going to send um, Strider down to Dole Amroth and get crowned, right? Because I have there and back again. And so that means I can move Strider straight from the Fellowship all the way to Dole Amroth and crown him. And so I think that's why I was thinking, nah, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to declare. So that's that's my thinking, but maybe, maybe it should have. I should have. Um, all right, he musters um, in Orthanc, and I move these guys to Westamnet. Obviously, it's not great because I don't have a second army movement, and if he moves into um, Fords of Eisen too quickly, then um, I will have to, you know, either use a ring, or um, my current plan, I think, is if he attacks into there, I can scouts. Instead of into Helm's Deep, I can scouts to Westamnet and then use a uh, character die to get them all into Helm's Deep and still have Helm's Deep reasonably well defended. So um, with that extra movement, I move to Angmar. I don't, uh, towards Angmar, I don't know, maybe this guy is coming over to um, Rivendell. I don't have a lot of army movement, so yeah. I don't know exactly what should what should be happening there. He musters in Umbar, and it makes me nervous because I'm thinking maybe Corsairs are coming. Um, maybe he's just mer um, going to merge this army. I don't know. Why is he mustering some in Isengard and some in down here? It, it does keep me off balance. I, I really don't know exactly where he's going to attack. These guys are just at a standstill. Um but I go ahead and move the fellowship and uh, finally he catches me, but just gets a one. So um, the Witch King goes north. I don't know why we muster here and then the Witch King goes north. If we're gonna attack in here, why not muster? Why not muster here? And since I, there's no companion currently in Fangorn, you know, Saruman is actually relatively safe. Um, I muster Rohan one toward war. I don't know. I'm looking at this now. Why do that? Why not just keep getting more units in the north? Um, I guess I'm thinking these guys are coming up here. And so I can perhaps a muster into Helm's Deep if that's going to happen. I don't, I don't really know what I'm thinking there. All right. He plays Palantir now with two dice, uh, Palantir dice. It's beautiful. I think that's a great play, and I think I have to get rid of it. So I use my other muster to get rid of it, and um, he goes ahead and draws a card, and then I move again. I'm at seven movement. I mean, the Fellowship is just flying here, and he hits me again um, and finally gets the reveal. So that's good. And I mean, good for him, but you know, I feel, it feels kind of fair at this point, right? Um, why did I go all the way to Eastern Brownlands? I guess I felt like if I go to Western I mean, Wheel, then it, he can spare a unit more easily um, from, from here. 
than if um, than the unit from Dol Golder, because I'm definitely still thinking about this army, you know, coming in, trying to do some sort of military attack. Um, and I guess I have there, there and back again. So maybe I'm still thinking about separating units and trying to get them up to Dale. Um, I, I don't know if I go to Western Eminwheel, then, um, and I lose a hobbit, then they're much closer to Fangorn and that can turn on Ents. So I don't know. I don't know which is best. It's not it's not clear to me exactly where they should go. Alright, so he gets its he gets his extra tile and it's a three. So that's nice. And I take a random companion at this point. Um, you know, I don't want to lose Strider. Um but I also you know, need to start taking random companions. And at this point I'm thinking, oh man, why didn't I, I really should have probably Western Heaven wheel would have been better given that this random draw is happening. All right. So, um, I get Mary and I go up to four corruption. And at this point I'm like, well, it's too far to Fangorn, but you know, maybe this army is going to come in, this Dale army is going to come in here and then I'll have a companion to fight into Dol Guldur. So that could be cool. Um, all right, so that happened, and then he is staying pretty focused on um, eyes and corruption, even though the fellowship is doing pretty well. But now I'm revealed he has cruel weather. There are going to be some some good things. He gets rid of fighting Urkai. Yeah, it probably makes sense. And I, after some consideration, get rid of there and back again. Um, and, but I'm happy to see. Um, I'm happy to see Book of Mazarbul because maybe, maybe this Hobbit can eventually get up there. That could be good. I don't know that it's going to get up there in time, but it's a possibility. All right, so he allocates an eye and rolls two more and gets a bunch of Palantirs. So obviously this is not a good roll for him. I only get one movement. Obviously I want to keep moving the Fellowship because things are going so well for them. Um, and I start by hiding. He let's see. So he's attacking. We're talking on Discord. I, I'm pretty sure he's attacking Fords of Eyes in here. Um, but I'm just wondering, does what does he have in terms of cards? Um and maybe do I wanna do I wanna use up my attack right now first? Do I wanna play some cards, draw some cards, see what I see what I get? I might be I might be a little tempted to do that. Um, so I do have scouts. He attacks into Fords of Eisen. And now I don't have Ents. I'm far from Ents. So he puts, he puts everybody in, but I'm like, whoa, he has no, um, musters. He does have a ring though. So that is, that is a little tricky. And that's the drawback of, um, giving him a ring, but he played the Palantir of Orthanc. So I think that's, that's good that he, that he has the ring. Um, you know, I'm thinking, oh man, maybe I should have saved there and back again because then I could have separated a companion into Fangorn with there and back again. Um, all right, but I go ahead and use army movement because that makes sense. And um, I threaten with this army into Dol Guldur. He didn't draw a lot of, um, he doesn't have a lot of musters and this seems like the perfect time to, to threaten it. Maybe I take everybody, but I like leaving somebody in Dale so that I can muster up there more um, if he doesn't deal with it. And then he moves this army back from Old Forest Road. And that's an interesting choice. I'm not sure why not come to Eastern Mirkwood instead of Narrows of the Forest. I think you want to be able to attack this army, but maybe he's afraid that I'm going to attack him. It's possible. He's going to be able to get himself into Dol Guldur um, before I attack it. So, you know, that's good. Um, and again, he's leaving somebody in Umbar quite cautious, even though I don't I don't really see how Umbar is being threatened at this point. I guess the, this guy could come back in. I guess that's possible. Um, all right. So 
I um, move because, you know, I, it's possible that he could have put somebody on here or put some Nazgul on, on there. So might as well move. I get my one movement. He hits me and we get a three. And since it's another three, I'm thinking, well, I'm going to risk Strider again. And, um, you know, that's, that's worth the risk. Um, and maybe, just maybe, I'll get a Hobbit, and then I can get him into Fangorn. And so one out of five chance, I get the second Hobbit. So I get redemption for my um, mistaken location. Um, I still think Western, I mean, we'll, I'm like, ah, if I was there, then this Hobbit could be in Fangorn immediately. But um, I get to Parth Celebron. So that's pretty good because I have um, Book of Mazar Bowl. So I'm thinking... Like I can use this and then I can you I can get him with an end. Um, and that's gonna be really hard. I mean this this is very difficult for him to foresee. Like that was a random companion draw. I have not had a companion fangorn for a long time. It's just gonna be gonna be tough to foresee this. So I'm thinking I'm gonna be able to get him. Alright, so he continues to play red tiles. That's obviously good. Candles of corpses, hits for two. And I'm like, wow, I have, you know, the fellowship was doing well, but because I lost the hobbits to the three tiles, um, I'm actually up at eight corruption, right? I mean, that's, that's really high. Um, and I'm going to probably end up having to lose some of these guys to corruption inefficiently. And, you know, now I'm, I'm not feeling as good. Um, you know, I have nine corruption worth of companions, so I'm kind of at negative one, but probably I'm not going to be able to lose them efficiently. Um, so maybe against those threes, I should have considered losing Strider, but Strider's guide ability is so good that I, I think it makes sense to take the random and hope to get a two, a two value companion instead of a one. Um, and part of me still thinks, okay, maybe I'm still going to get, get Strider, um, dead men of Dunharrow I have in my hand, you know, so there, there could be some cool things, but all right. So that was obviously a good draw for me, but he is creeping up the corruption. Um, I go ahead and move, um, armies and take Angmar while I can. Why not? Um, you know, that seems fine. Um, and I'm threatening, I'm threatening Dol Guldur. So he, and this, this was exactly my hope of what was going to happen. Um, I wanted him to use his ring now to get into Dol Guldur because um, that way I can use my Palantir to play Book of Mazarbal at the end of the round and then hit him with Ents at the start of the round. Had I just played Book of Mazarbo first, then he could use that ring to move this army back or to or to muster here, and I wouldn't have as good a shot at taking Saruman out. Um, maybe he still has ring wraiths or abroad or something that's going to let him defend, but um, this way seemed the sneakiest to me. So I'm happy to see him use up his ring. Um, he's probably happy to defend Dol Golder. I don't know. Why not leave one dude? I don't know that you need to bring in six here i would just leave one dude in narrows of the forest because you're gonna end up going into siege anyway um and then i play book of mazarbal which is I, you know that's how could he foresee that i think that's really super sneaky um i get the oh yeah sorry i i don't know what i was thinking i knew that i had gandalf over here um G gandalf uh sets the dwarves to war so um yeah, there's no re no reason for this hobbit to go up there. I have Gandalf to do it. So Gandalf is doing a bunch of getting getting people to war over here um, and causing a bunch of trouble for Shadow. And this is doubly good because um, the hobbit is now in Fangorn. I'm going to be able to hit him with Ents at the start of the turn. And he does not have any um, reinforcement or movement cards that would let him... Um, that would let him get me. So that's just, you know, bad luck for him. Um, all right. So, um, I get King Brandsman. I'm happy to see that. Um, 
my force pool, you know, I've mustered a lot of the north, but I still have a bunch of regulars left. And I wonder, like, maybe I should be mustering over here to be able to get um, Mount Gundabad. I'm definitely still thinking about military possibilities. Um, all right, but I think, you know, he's generally doing a good job holding off on, you know, these reinforcements. Shadows on Misty Mountain is a great defense for, for Moria, which is often a target, um, half orc and goblin men, and he's been leaving um, he's been leaving regulars a lot of places. So, you know, it's not, it's not obvious exactly where this army should go. Maybe it ends up going down to, to, um, more and on, um, you know, that's a possibility. All right. So I'm obviously going to hit him with an int first thing. He knows it. I know it. And, um, I go ahead and declare the fellowship because I want to get it away from, this Dol Golder army, which is maybe why he ended up bringing an extra one so that he could have put somebody on the fellowship. Um, I don't know. So um, I declare, and then he uh, allocated two eyes. I'm not sure, given the military threats that have been happening, does it, do you really need to allocate two? Maybe um, if he's thinking, you know, I'm going to play cautious militarily, move slowly with my units, but then I'm just going to keep pounding on the fellowship. You do have um, Nazgul Search and Cruel Weather. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know that I would put two eyes in. Um, I get um, to go first, and of course I, I use a... Um, Will of the West, because I'm, you know, you don't want to risk, I didn't want to risk Day Without Dawn. So um, you don't want to lose two dice to Day Without Dawn. So I, I use that and, um, you know, bye-bye Saruman. It was a pretty sneaky way of doing it, hard for him to foresee. Plus on top of that, had a bad, had a bad roll, so he couldn't even muster at the end of last turn. Um, yeah, what can you do? That was really hard to predict. Um, he goes ahead and plays Shadows on Misty Mountain now. I'm thinking, I guess he's going after Lorien, or at least that's his plan. I'm moving the Fellowship because, you know, I want to I want to keep going. I think uh, even against a bunch of eyes, it's only close to 50-50 there. And he misses, and then he plays Cruel Weather now to make sure that I can't get in, which I think makes a lot of sense. Um, he moves me back, and I go ahead and play King Brand's Men. Why not? Um, and now I drew through a day and a night. So obviously that's a really good option given my current dice. I'm going to be able to, this, this army is quite flexible in terms of where, where it can go. I can threaten um, Mordor with it. Um, I could go, I mean, I could go a lot of places. I could, I could go to Old Forest Road and get all the way to Carrick and merge up with this army and have just a giant, giant army up north. You know, the Fellowship, I, I'm not in a super rush to move the Fellowship. He only has two victory points. He's not moving that fast militarily. So my inclination is only move once with the Fellowship per turn. Um, I have Strider is guy. I'm not going to, I'm sort of decided now, given how high corruption is, I'm not going to get rid of him. I'm hoping eventually I'll draw into Athelos, maybe while Strider is still guide. Um, and I have plenty of things I can be doing militarily to, to harass him and mess with him. So, um, so think about what you would do with these two dice, where you would go. You know, you want to cause the most trouble for Shadow. Um, he reinforces Moria. It makes me think he's going for Lorien. I wish, or maybe he's going for Rivendell. I don't know. Um, it makes me wish that um, I had kept that, um, you know, Celeborn's, Celeborn's Galadrim, because um, it didn't end up saving Minas Tirith anyway. I don't know. It's nice that he doesn't, I mean, he still has a bunch of armies over here. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe it would have been better. Or, you know, getting the elves to war, but the elves are just really far away from war. I don't have three musters to spare to get them to war, even though I, I do have power too great. So I'm sort of hoping, like, that's going to stall him. It'll slow him down a bit. All right. I go ahead um, and muster into Erebor. 
that's interesting. I don't know. Is that what you would do? Um, I guess I'm thinking I'm going to power these guys up and I'm going to try and take Mount Gundabad or I'm just going to be prepared because I want to give the fellowship time and that's a good place to use musters at this point in the game. Fair enough. Um, he goes ahead and attacks Helm's Deep and now that they're at war, um, yeah, power too great. So I'm not sure that why do I want to get the elves closer to war to help him get Mouth of Sauron? Um, I guess I, I feel like the fellowship is close enough that it's worth it's worth going for it. Um, getting the elves to war in advance of these attacks that are certainly coming. He goes ahead and um, takes out Rohan while he has the chance. I think that's a great play. He's going to bring this army up. And even though Rohan is at war now, I can't can't really muster them effectively. Um, I go ahead and declare again, and I get two wills of the what? No, I hadn't rolled yet. All right, so I only got one character movement. Probably things are going slow enough for his military that I'm okay with only moving once, but we'll see. I'm going to go ahead and start off. He misses, um, and then he plays Nazgul Search. Not um, that effective while Strider is guide. It does waste a die for me. Um, Maybe maybe I wait to see if the fellowship moves again, if I'm going to spend a ring, um, and then you can get an extra tile into to, to hit me into Morinon. Um, I don't know. I mean, spending one die to waste a, one die from the free people is, is not a bad, not a bad idea. Um, so he reveals me and I go ahead and hide right away. You know, I have military options, but also I'm, I want to keep moving with the, with the fellowship. And he goes ahead and takes Rohan. I thought about mustering there. It wastes half a movement for him, but he's still going to take it for sure. Um, so, you know, I don't know, maybe, maybe that's wrong. Um, I go ahead and use a ring at this point because... I want to get into Mordor and he doesn't have anybody on me. So he's only hitting me on a five. And I know that he's already played. Um, I know that he's already played cruel weather. So, um, you know, maybe it makes sense to wait on that ring for the last action, because now that he knows that I've done it um, and, and he misses, um, now he can cycle or try and cycle into a uh, character card, something like, um, he's already played Orc Patrol, but, but maybe, you know, Isildur's Bane or Foul Thing, um, or Nazgul Strike, any of those he could, he could play. Um, so probably if I know that I'm going to use a ring, I shouldn't be that worried about, um, a unit getting on me. I mean, maybe I should be, maybe it makes sense to, to move, but to move while he doesn't have anybody on me because a simple army movement would get somebody on me. Yeah. I don't know. So he goes ahead and, um, piles up on Helm's deep and, um, manages to attack. I play, um, you know, a pretty ineffective, uh, valor, but, what can you do? And he misses and I miss. So pretty friendly battle. He doesn't attack again because he's hoping to um, cycle into something. And this is interesting. I think if you're attacking and you're using a ring, like why not use the attack first, see what you get, because maybe you're not going to want to use the ring. So um, I think it probably makes sense to save that ring, use the uh character die to attack while while you have it um and he gets one hit i get um three hits and you know he's whittling me down and then you know might as well play elven cloaks he did though cycle into foul thing so he's happy to see that he you know i think that's a really nice play on his part he's really going to be able to slow down the fellowship significantly if he manages to reveal them on the last die he doesn't have great chances of revealing me um 
but he could. And so it's worth, it's worth taking the shot. Um, and I wonder if he didn't have a ring, would he have still cycled like that quite as much? Probably, but I don't know that I needed to give that to him. All right. So then he plays foul thing and he gets a one reveal, which is perfect, right? That's exactly what you want. I have to take a random companion. He's definitely getting two value corruption for it. Um, that's better. That's literally the perfect tile for him. Um, because I'm going to like, it reveals me, he's going to get an extra tile from, um, the stronghold and he's getting two corruption, possibly three corruption out of that one tile. All right. Um, he did not get strider though. And, um, he does reveal me and then he gets a three on the stronghold tile. So, which is also, um, which is also the best, really the best option. So that was really just a perfect double draw for him. And now the fellowship is feeling, um, much, much worse. Um, I lose Strider here. Um, not random because I'm worried about, um, Isildur's Bane. He hasn't played that yet. Um, and you know, I'm, it's not that likely that, um, it's not that likely that he will be able to get me, but if, you know, there's an eye, I could get, I could get higher. Um, I wonder about his choice to play it on this card, on this um, action, instead of his last action, because had I not lost Strider, had it been like a zero reveal and then an eye or something like that, then I could hide again with this um, army muster. So I think if you're going to play this, like might as well wait. It, it turned out to not matter because I, I had to lose Strider. Um, maybe given that, um, given that I am revealed right now and I have an extra die, maybe I should have taken a random there instead of Strider guaranteed. Um, but I didn't really want to be at nine. Um, and then there was going to be no chance to lose Strider efficiently. Um, and I, I'm, you know, hoping that, you know, he's not going to roll too many eyes. I'm going to be able to move slowly enough with Gollum, um, maybe draw into, you know, I have, there's another way already. So Bilbo song, like I can heal and still, and still make it up mortar. Obviously that was losing five corruption to that card, um, was quite bad, right? Like that was an incredibly gr five corruption and a die because I'm going to have to hide. So that was, that was a huge, huge swing. Um, and I wonder if I could have avoided it by not, by not playing the ring, by not, by not spending the ring so early on. Um, yeah. So I'm feeling, you know, I had been feeling pretty good early hunt. Um, and he played, you know, orc patrol there. So, um, or patrol for the combat effect, right? I was very happy to see that go. Um, but I think this just goes to show you a shadow, like stay persistent. You can still um, stay on top of the fellowship. And even if they had a great start, right? Like I had a really good start, but um, he was able to um, crow weather me and Nazgul search and just generally slow me down. And then this um, tile draw here into... Um, the stronghold was huge and maybe, you know, I could have avoided one extra tile draw by declaring into, um, instead of having to go through Moria. I mean, I think it probably made sense for me to keep it at the time. Cause I was still thinking at that point I was going to maybe get Aragorn, but, um, yep. Yeah. I think military was going, his military was going slow enough that I should think to myself, I'm going to keep Strider in because I'd rather the corruption sponge than the extra die because I don't need the speed of the extra die and I do potentially need the corruption. I don't know. Um, okay, so that was huge. That was just an absolutely huge action, five corruption and cost me a die. Um, and I go ahead and muster the elves because I want to be prepared for this attack, right? He's going to be coming in um, and I want to be able to muster into Lorien. 
um, or into Rivendell, wherever he chooses to attack. So he musters another into Moria, and obviously this is looking this is looking pretty good. That's ten units. Um, all right, I'm very happy to see um, Smeagol helps nice master. That's a great tile, and he got uh, she loves Lair. So pretty good. And the current the current hunt pool. Let's see what the current hunt pool is. Um, he allocates only one eye here, and rolls. Um, an extra one. Obviously, it hurts that he hasn't. He doesn't have Saruman that is slowing him down. Um, the hunt pool right now is, you know, not great for free people. I would say, you know, if I move slowly, I'll be happy with taking two. Um, you know, on average, what is this average out to? It's I guess it's a little less than two, right? Because we have mostly twos and then zero, 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 one, and then the red tile. So, but if I take two and then two and then two and then two, I, I can't take 10 corruption, right? Like right now I'm currently on eight. If I use these perfectly, these companions efficiently, I'm at four. That means I can take a total of seven corruption with a little healing, eight corruption, but realistically, I'm probably taking, right? I'm probably taking nine corruption on the way up. Um, so I'm thinking I have to play Smeagol Helps Nice Master and hope to draw it. It's gonna be it's gonna be a tough climb. Um, I start by hiding. Uh, I know I'm gonna do that, and then he gets Shelob in. Um, given that he already put Shelob in, I'm gonna play Smeagol Helps Nice Master. Um, and then he reinforces this Rohan army. Do I love that? I don't know. Why do we need to do that right now? Is he going to play Grand or something like that in preparation of Grand? No. So I don't love that. Um, why not wait and see where you need it? Also, potentially, like, I can be going for a military victory. Um, where did the unit go in Morinon? Did he move it to Gorgoroth at some point? Why would he? I don't know. Maybe, maybe I missed that. I thought there was a unit in Morinon. I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I missed that at some point. Um, that does open up possibilities for this army, right? For this army to come in here. He can defend it with some mustering, but um, Mordor is actually looking pretty weak. I think it's going to be a little tricky for him to defend all of these. I'm tempted to save this card. See how this battle goes. Or the other thing is you could use this Palantir to draw a card. You know, if you're not happy... Um, with what you have, I mean, pits. I guess he has pits of Mordor, so that's a good, you know, that's a good defense. Um, yeah, I don't know exactly what he was going to play. All right, so I pass. He musters the mouth. That's great, obviously. And then I go ahead and try my move, and I get a zero. So that's great uh, for me. And he plays Lord of the Ring, though. So well played on his part. He does two corruption with that card. It's not that often that you get a um, character card that can do two corruption. So that's a that's that's a great play. I mean, Foul Thing did five, um, but um, you know normally you're happy to to do one and a half. You know I'll play Candles of Corpses and do one and a half on average. So this is two. So this is this is a good play. And now I am not feeling great about the fellowship. And I start to I start to get my armies moving. So this um, Dwarven army is gonna. My plan is to come around to Mount Gundabad, and um, this army is gonna come south and threaten um, through a day and a night, right into Morinon. That'd be great. So these guys move along from Dol Guldur. That's a little too too well defended, and um, 
you know, it's part of he's like, well, maybe I can attack into this, but that's, you don't want to weaken Dol Guldur because if he attacks into it, I can, I can attack back or potentially I can play scouts and then get into Mordon. So this just has to sit here patiently. Um, he, I, for some reason I thought that army was already there, but, um, and then he gets this army into, um, Ash Mountains, which is great. Um, because that way, if I play through a day and a night to Daggerlad, he can just slam this army into it and, uh, you know, do a bunch of casualties, um, or potentially muster and mourn on. I don't know. He has, um, he is holding pits of Mordor, you know, obviously I would pref I would feel even better if I was holding, um, um, half orcs and goblin men and pits of Mordor, but all right. So when I'm, um, mustering, I got the elves to war. I don't know exactly why. Um, I guess I'm thinking these armies are coming in. He's going to take Helm's Deep. That's going to take him up to six. Um, I don't know. I, I guess I want to make sure I defend Lorien. And if he moves out, then I want to be prepared to attack um, with the elves. Um, maybe I, I want to be able to move Woodland Realm into merge up with these guys and have them attack. It gets me one and a half musters. I don't know. It's not. It's not exactly clear what I should be doing with that. Why not? Why not move this army somewhere? Um, where does it go? Yeah, I guess it's not entirely clear where it should go right now. It's keeping Dol Golder pinned down, and that way these this army is safe to go this way, and um, he's gonna have trouble holding Mount Gundabad. All right, so um, I guess he's attacking in Helm's Deep, and um, I do five casualties. He only does one, so that's obviously very good for me, and it will make it hard for him to reinforce. He gets Isildur's Bane, which was the card I was scared of, and um, Shadow Lengthens. He allocates one eye and then rolls four more. And the fellowship is revealed right now, so I'm very happy to, um, you know, potentially not not risk um, taking an eye. I can just hide and keep going with my military plans nice and slow. Um, I go ahead and hide. Maybe that's a little silly of me. Maybe I should give up on, on the fellowship. I am worried about if he had a card that, it, like, I don't know. I don't think he's played Morgul Wound yet. Morgul Wound, Isildur's Bane. It just, it just gets me really close to, um, 12 Corruption. And I have military chances, so I want to, I want to make sure he's not going to corrupt me. So I'm going to, you know, I'm going to hide at some point. Might as well do it early on. He doesn't have a ring and he didn't roll any Palantirs or character dice. So this is really like quite a bad roll for him. Um, like really bad. And maybe I shouldn't, maybe I shouldn't hide here. Um, it sort of makes sense, but maybe I need to give up on the fellowship. I don't know. I don't know exactly what I should be doing here. I have more Ents. Um, I have a little bit of healing from, from there's another way. I can draw one character card. Um, I guess I need to hide to avoid taking the corruption. So, so that's why. That's why I do it. Probably makes sense. All right. He plays Pits of Mordor now and reinforces um, this big army. So he's going to be prepared to, to attack Lorien or to go up and attack um, Rivendell. Yeah, this is interesting. I might have wanted to save that to see which location I besieged. Like, what about Mount Gundabad? Like, is he not worried about um, me taking Mount Gundabad. It seems like I'm not one, two, three, four. I'm not that far away. I have, I have movement to do it. Um, and there we go. So I start and I'm coming down this way. I guess, what am I thinking there? I'm thinking I can sneak into or I have, I do have, um, through a day and a night. 
So it's possible I can sneak in. Um, maybe these guys are, depending on where this army is moving, maybe I'm going, I don't know. I, I don't know exactly where this army is going. I guess it's possible to go down to, to Umbar or to sneak in this way. I guess, I guess I, I, one option is dead, um, dead marshes, pick up this guy. That was a deep plan. Um, and then fight into North Athelian, uh, minus Morgul and then continue on to Baradur. Um, but he has enough musters that I just don't know if that makes sense. So I think I'm just, I'm just sort of biding my time. If this army goes away, I can re reverse course. Um, if this army goes away, I can reverse course. Um, so I guess it keeps my options open. Um, he moves armies in. Yeah, and, and I could I could potentially retake Minas Tirith. Um, I don't know. It gives, that buys me more time for the Fellowship, but the Fellowship kind of already has a decent amount of time. He's really not that close. I mean, I guess, I guess this army, but, but where is he coming up with other... Where are his other victory points? I have musters to be able to muster into Lorien. I guess if this army is leaving Erebor, it, it will give him some possible victory points up here. All right, so I continue with my plan. I move this way. Um, I guess now I'm thinking I'm going for Orthanc. Or maybe I'm just like recapturing some of Rohan and I have a big mustering pool in Rohan. So if I can get to Westham net, I can just start to muster up. And that could be good. Um, and this army is clearly going to go take Mount Gundabad, right? Like that's, at least I'm going to do that and then we'll, and then we'll see what happens from there. So he, um, he moves a dude into Fords of Eisen to play, to counterplay against through a day and a night, um, which I think is pretty, I think that's pretty clever. And um, he moves from North Athelian into us Gilead. Okay. I don't know exactly what that's doing. Um, I wonder about Path of the Woeses. Maybe maybe that's something to think about. Does he need to block Druid and Forest? Why isn't this army going somewhere? You know, like you could start to threaten. Um, oh, we still have Power Too Great. Yeah. How is he going to get rid of Power Too Great? Maybe with these two, maybe this two. He has to, I mean, he's built up this army, so I think it's worth it to deal with Power Too Great. And also, is he just gonna, he's just going to let Mount Gundabad fall? Yeah, okay. As long as he gets, as long as he gets this, and then he comes up here. And now these are kind of easy pickings. All right, so I move to Fangorn. Now maybe it makes more sense to move to Westamnet so I can start mustering. Um, but this does give me some options to go into Fords of Eisen, and then if he attacks me, to get into Orthanc. So. You know, it's a little tricky for him to dance around. I don't know. I don't know exactly what he should be doing here. Um, obviously, I'm I'm attacking Mount Gundabad. He could have mustered some up there to make it harder to take. I think he just sort of wrote that off. Um, he decides to move this army into Fords of Eisen. So that, because he saw that I could just attack into Fords of Eisen and then take Orthanc next turn. So if you were going to end up moving this, it's a little, like, it's definitely wasteful that he had to um, do two movements to get, you know, these army units here. Um, I don't know exactly how many to leave. I guess you don't want Helm's Deep attacking out and breaking the siege. So three is probably about right. Um, you know, I could, I could attack out of there. Um... And then this army is coming to the rescue. So he, he has a lot of a lot of problems here. I don't know exactly where he should be attacking. The fellowship, though, he has done a really nice job of stopping the fellowship. So um I think it's gonna be pretty tough for the fellowship to destroy the ring, given that they need four movement and 
you know, four corruption with uh, six corruption. It's going to be tough. All right. Um, so I moved Gandalf up to Angmar. I don't know why. Uh, what's my plan there? I guess, I guess he's going to help out with this army. Um, so that I can get a companion there. And I guess there's a possibility of attacking from Eagles Irie into Mount Gundabad. And then, um, I play through a day and a night to get, um, this regular into Mount Gundabad. All right. It was certainly unlucky that he rolled so many eyes, no characters, no Palantirs. Um, just a really unlucky turn for him. All right. And my armies are now on the move. All right. I got wizard staff could be useful if Gandalf is actually in battle. Um, and I have a bunch of cards. So think about what you would, what you would discard here. Um, obviously Bilbo song, and there is another way, like that's pretty good healing. Maybe that's enough to let me get to the end of Mordor. Um, I don't know exactly how useful scouts is at this point. Um, you know, maybe he's going to, maybe he's going to attack me and I can try scouts at some point. Um, all right. So, um, uh, he drew a card for me accidentally. That was wrong. So, Ah, interesting. So I guess, uh, sorry about that. Th these are my seven cards. I have these seven cards um, because he drew he drew cards for me. That was confusing. All right, so these seven cards, what do you discard? I think you get rid of scouts. I don't know, maybe not scouts. The Ent seems useful in these battles. Wizard Staff, maybe Gandalf isn't in battle, and I want to keep scouts in case this army attacks into me, and then I can be sneaky and go somewhere else. What do you get rid of? So I still need to discard. I discard Wizard Staff. He rolled prematurely. That's fine. And then um, he rolled three more eyes. So he is really rolling high on eyes. I did not get as many attacks as I wanted here, um, but I still get to attack Mount Gundabad. So... Um, he, um, musters into Orthanc. I guess that makes sense. And I try and move the fellowship because, um, you have to move. If you don't move, then you take corruption. Now it is risky against four eyes. Um, but I kind of, I kind of want to take two and then, um, I can get the maximum use um, out of there is another way. I didn't actually have Bilbo song. That was, he teased me with that. Um, all right. So I got lucky and draw a zero. So, so far up Mordor, I've gotten very good draws. I've gotten a zero and a zero. And the only corruption I've taken was when he played Lord of the Ring. So the hunt pool that is remaining, um, pretty rough pretty rough. I'm definitely not going to be moving again this turn. Even if I had more character dice, I certainly wouldn't be moving again. Um, all right. So he musters more into Orthanc because he's going to need to retake, um, you know, be able to retake Helm's Deep. And um, I go ahead and muster up Lorien. And he starts moving towards... Um, towards the north with this army again, because why not? I mean, this is, this is pretty weak. I'm not that near Dol Golder and, um, he can, uh, he has enough dice to attack back if I use, um, through a day and a night to get towards Dol Golder. So that's fine. Um, I draw a character card, I guess, even though I have too many, I need to at least threaten being able to make progress on um, the Mordor track. And so I'm trying to get more useful cards. I get rid of an Ent. I don't know if it makes sense to hold on to this Scouts, but I am a little worried about this attack coming and I wanna be able to be tricky with it and um, 
not not take damage and keep this army active and, and threatening. So he gets the ring is mine. Obviously, that's great. He has all four, um, all four red tiles in. And I go ahead and play, there's another way now, because I felt like drawing another character card at this point would not, um, would not make sense, would not help me. Um, but maybe I should. I don't know. Um, I'm not getting full use out of this, but I'm but I'm getting full corruption value out of it. I'm healing the one, and the only thing that I'm giving up is an extra die of movement or hiding, which he's not making a lot of military progress, so I'm not too worried about that. So I guess that was my thinking on using it now. Um, all right, but it was heroic death, so if I'm going the military route, Maybe it would have been better to save it. I don't know. Um, all right, so he attacks into Fangorn, as I expected, and I'm happy to have the scouts to get to um, to get to retreat. And um, he gets to draw a character card. So now I have Path of the Woeses. Um, so these guys can teleport. You know, they can't teleport particularly far. Um, so not so useful. Maybe the sudden strike will be useful. Um, kind of wishing I had more uh, leadership up here for this, this combat. Um, all right, let's see what we roll. So he got dreadful spells. That'll be useful. And he drew orcs multiplying again right now to be able to reinforce um, not gone to bad. And um, I sort of figured he would have already played it if he had it. So the chances of him drawing it right there were one out of 11, assuming he didn't already have it and was holding it for some reason, though. I don't think he would be holding it. All right. So this time he allocates one eye and rolls zero. Um, and I get a perfectly nice roll. Good, good mix. And um, I start by moving the fellowship. You know, I'm happy to have, I'm happy to see only one eye in there. So if I get hit by an eye, it's not, um, it's not that bad. And I'm still at this point hoping to destroy the ring. Maybe that's crazy of me. Maybe I should be attacking into Mount Gundabad and just going the military route. Um, but the thing is, if I don't have, if I, if I don't have any chance of destroying the ring, then um, it's going to be really hard to win militarily. Um, five dice against 10. And these guys are going to have to, you know, sort of move and hide or I'm eventually I'm going to lose on corruption. So my thinking is move now. I'm going to, I'm going to keep moving, hopefully continue to get lucky. Um, there's only one eye in the pool. So got to keep trying. So that's, that's my thinking. Use the will of the West because, you know, I can avoid day without dawn. So um, I get an eye, which at this point is a one in reveal. That's, you know, nice. I'm very happy with a one in reveal um, just to avoid the red tiles. I just want to avoid the red tiles. So that's fine. I take, um, I decide to lose Legolas because, um, I don't know, I guess I wanted Gollum to be able to... Um, make these tiles not reveal me, I guess. Um, and if I draw into Bilbo's song, part of me is like, well, you literally just played um, There's Another Way. So like why, if you knew that you were going to lose Legolas to a, even a one, then why bother? But yeah, I don't really know what I was thinking. I guess I was thinking Isildur's Bane drawing Shelob could kill me it's very low odds but why why risk it if i'm gonna be thinking militarily um all right so all right so he gets um helms deep ready this army is moving back to south rune i guess so that it can go up 
up north. These guys can, he has some musters and he can take Erebor. And I only have one muster right here. So Lorien is, you know, currently protected by power too great. Um, yeah, so he's, he's making slow military progress, but the fellowship is in a pretty tight spot. And I, they're in a pretty tight spot, and I've been lucky going up Mordor, for sure. He, you know, he has all four red tiles in there. Um, all right, I go ahead and attack Mount Gundabad. And I'm a little surprised that he didn't play this. Like, why, why not play this to make this attack harder? I mean, yeah, I'm probably going to get it either way. But, like, you have the card. Why, why not? You can make it a little harder. Um, so he gets a hit. I press and I get him in two rounds. So this is this is a very nice army available to do good things. And I'm up to two points. Um, he attacks in um, Helm's Deep. I use my Ents um, here. Uh, and he doesn't know, but that is the last, that is the last end card. Um, I get three hits and whittle that army down some more. He gets uh, zero, pretty, pretty unlucky combat in Helm's Deep for him. He has taken a whole bunch of casualties and has only done two to me. It's just quite unlucky, unlucky. Um, he presses and continues. I um, have a daylight, he gets one hit but I managed to get three. So this is just, I mean, he's just, it's just crazy how much damage he's taken. It's, it's, I don't know exactly what the odds are, but I think less than 10% chance that he takes that much damage while only dishing a total of three damage to me um, in this Helm's Deep. I mean, you give yourself the best chances you can, but that's, that's just unlucky for him. Um, all right, so um, he, I'm not exactly sure where he's attacking. All right, so he attacks into Helm's Deep again. Um, and draws a strategy card here. Shadow lengthens to reinforce this army, giving up on Lorien and, um, you know, having a strong attack up north now. And I'm thinking, um, you know, actually, when I see it, this army can use through Dana Knight to get to Western Brownlands or North Anduin Vale. Then I can use the character die to attack Dol Golder. And then I can use a ring to attack um, with, uh, with my last die. So it's possible I could get a military victory this turn, especially if this army moves away. So I just want to pass and wait and see. And then he moves that army away. And, you know, he doesn't have any rings. It's not clear to me how he can come back. Um, but he does have the mouth and he hasn't used the mouth yet. So he does have one more attack, but I, I do through a day and a night, I go to, um, South Anduin Vale and, and now he musters into Dol Golder normally, but what he could have done because he had ring wraiths are abroad is he could have used the mouth to come back to narrows of the forest. And then probably I would have attacked Dol Golder. He would have gone into siege and then he could have played ring wraiths are abroad to do the attack. And this army would be able to take out this army and I'd be forced to retreat. So this way he is mustering an elite. I'm going to attack into it and then he's going to play um, orcs are multiplying again. So like this is pretty good against this, but this, this gives me a chance to win the game right now. Um, if I manage to, um, win this battle and he just didn't have to risk that, um, right. He could have, he could have used the mouth and then used ring wraiths or abroad and taken out this army before it had a chance to attack in the siege. 
So, um, you know, and the, and the fellowship is not looking great with this hunt pool. I mean, this is a bad hunt pool. If I get really lucky and get this zero, I mean, it's possible. It's not, it's not impossible to move two more times. Um, but it's definitely, it's definitely tight in his favor for sure. All right. So I go ahead and try and win the game and um attack in uh dull golder and uh we have a bunch of sudden strikes i roll some sixes he rolls some sixes um and then i have another sudden strike and um then i managed to do it so the hobbits were uh were great they really did a whole bunch this game um made it to fangorn and did a sneak attack against um or thank and and then in the end led this charge into Dol Guldur. So, um, and Gandalf was just up here bringing people to war. So it was a pretty, um, pretty interesting game. Um, I thought he played really well. There were a few a few mistakes that last turn. Um, you know we've been playing for a long time. This is turn twelve. Um, so let me show you the statistics. Um, so I believe that there's a bug that these are reversed in a replay. So actually this is shadow and this is the free people. Um, but you can see these are, you know, pretty even, relatively even distribution, a little low on sixes, you know, a little low on sixes, but not too bad. Um, you can see I was really quite low on movement. Um, it is a 12, you know, 12 turn game. Um, but had a lot of muster as an army and was able to put them to good use. He allocated quite a lot of eyes and then rolled quite a lot of eyes. Um, I'm a little surprised this is only plus two. It felt like he rolled even more than that, but I guess he was allocating some. Um, all right, so that's the game. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you have suggestions for um, other games for me to play or for me to analyze, I welcome it. And uh, thanks so much.